guys, welcome back to another video here with me at the Aspiring Home Cook. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I make royal icing to decorate things like these Easter eggs and you can also use this to decorate cakes. I will also share with you how to make a piping bag using plain old parchment paper. Okay, for our royal icing, here's what we're going to need. I've got one egg white in here. You will need about 180 grams of sifted icing sugar. It's important to sift it because if there's any lumps and those lumps get stuck in the tip of your nozzle, you're gonna have a hard time piping nice smooth lines, right? So sift your icing sugar. It all depends on the temperature, the humidity in the air, the size of your egg white and a number of factors. So I really can't give you an exact quantity with that. You have to go by the texture and the feel of the icing like I'll show you in a bit. And over here, I've got the tiniest bit of lime juice, about half a teaspoon's worth. All right, now it's important that you don't have any, not even a speck of egg yolk in here because if you've got egg yolks in here, even the tiniest bit, you're going to end up with a mix that does not beat up to stiff peaks and you won't be able to pipe out your royal icing. Likewise, with your bowl, your mixing bowl has got to be clean. You can't have traces of grease on it. So make sure that you clean that out thoroughly. We've got our mixing bowl. You can use a hand whisk also if you'd like, but there'll be a lot of elbow grease involved. An electric hand blender works perfectly as well. Drop in your egg white and you're going to start whisking this. Once your egg has whisked up to a nice froth, you're going to slowly add in your icing sugar. I've got a little extra in here, but I start off with about half the quantity of it in first and start off nice and slow because you're going to end up with a cloud of icing sugar otherwise. And it's important to scrape down the sides because you don't want any dry sugar left on the edges. And you're gonna continue whisking. Now this is all mixed in completely, but my icing is nowhere near done because it's still a very runny mixture. So I'm going to add a little bit more. I'd say about three fourths of that quantity. And I'm going to start mixing slowly at first and then increase the base. Now at this stage, my icing has gotten a lot thicker like you can see here, it's running off in a steady stream. So I know that I'm getting close to my consistency. I'm just going to add in a spoon of sugar, maybe a couple here, and then from now on, just a spoonful at, at a time till I get perfect stiff peaks. Using a clean knife, Test this. Okay. I'm lifting that up to see if it's going to hold its shape. It is, but as soon as I let it sit for a little while, it runs back into itself. Whoops! Right in time. So I know that it can take a little more sugar. It needs to be able to hold its shape without flopping back on itself. That's how you know it's ready. So till you get to that consistency, one spoonful at a time, keep adding your icing sugar. You should need, I'd say 160 to 180 of icing sugar per egg white. Now I think this is going to be perfect because I'll show you right here, I can feel I can see it's a little dry and on that knife itself, it's on the edge of the knife, I can see it holding its shape really well. So I know that this is ready to be piped. Now that most of your sugar has been dealt with, one last step is to add that tiny bit of lemon juice and give it a nice whisk again. You may find that this affects the consistency a tiny bit, but you should be able to add a tiny bit more sugar to adjust that as well. I'm just going to scrape down the edges to make sure that I've got no dry sugar anywhere in that bowl. Give it one final whisk and then we are ready to pipe. To make your piping bag, you're going to just need a square piece of baking paper, 
butter paper, parchment paper, whatever name you know it by. And fold that into, fold that across diagonally. And you're going to cut it across this diagonal. Now you're going to hold your pointy end on the top and get these two ends. All right. So pointy end up, you're going to fold this end towards that top and you're going to fold, do the same with the other end as well. Just to give you an idea, that's how it works. Now it may not always work out perfect here depending on how straight your lines were but you can always adjust them. What you are trying to do is get the finest tip that you can on this end. Once you've done that, I'm going to fold that once and fold it out a second time just to keep it secure. Now when I'm piping I find that this may not often stay exactly how it is so I put a little bit of sticky tape just on the seam over here on the outside. I'm just going to grab hold of some sticky tape and hold that seam together. You can if you'd like just staple the very top as well if that's something that you want to do but I don't find that's really necessary this holds up just fine now let's take a look at how you can use these little piping bags I find that putting it in a tall glass helps a lot and at all times when you're not using your royal icing make sure you keep it covered all right the first thing that you're going to do is cut out a little tip at the end not a very big tip just a tiny bit for that nozzle to peep out of so that's how much I've cut off You drop your nozzle in there and as one last precautionary measure, I put a little bit of tape just around that edge to make sure that everything is all secure together. Might have to cut that hole a little bit bigger. There we go. Right? piping bag in a tall glass and carefully drop your icing in there. All right. Once your icing is in there, you're going to make sure that that top end is secure. I like to keep the seam on the back over here and you're going to push that icing ever so gently till you can feel it come through the nozzle, right? There we go. And that my friends is how easy it is to make a piping bag at home. All right, just using a little parchment paper. And then you can go ahead and pipe whatever pattern you'd like. I hope you found this little video helpful. If you did, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and share it with family and friends that you think might find some use out of this. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to see you really soon in my next video.